Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. This is the Majestic Oracle, as you can see here from this very cinematic view. It has a little bit from below right here. This shiny ship in the middle of the GTA station right here. I think it looks like a very majestic ship. And we're going to be trying it out in Air Formations. I have tried it in Air Formations a very long time ago. I did prefer the Apocalypse, but this is now I'm talking about when I was an Alpha clone. So I've got better skills now, and I think in some ways maybe I could improve myself in how I do the Alpha missions and how I previously did, because now uh, I'm able to use Tech 2 Tachyon Beam Lasers because I'm an Omega. I used them when I was an Alpha clone with uh, the classic Tech 1 ones. And then also I've got a micro jump drive. This is something Alpha is not able to use. So I think this will be a very good option to be able to like kite stuff. Because this hardly really has any tank right here. We've got no resist mods. Only this auxiliary nano pump right here. And the dark blood medium armor repair. Otherwise we've got minimal tank. We're gonna rely mostly on being keeping our range from the NPCs. And then we've got this ionic field projector right here, which is gonna help with increasing our lock range because we've got actually quite a decent amount of range with the tachyon beam lasers, especially when we put some small, slightly longer range of ammo. In fact, if we were to put something like say, uh, the Aurora, this one right here, see 200 kilometer fall off. So we'll not be able to even use that. So that's why I didn't even bother using that ammunition type because we won't even be able to hit that file. But we're gonna try this in L4 missions. I wanna see how it does because I worry a bit about the tank, but I hope that we'll be able to negate the damage by keeping a range of the large micro jump drive. That's the main strategy right here. Now it is a bit tight on the CPU. And that's just the way it is. Uh, the CPU is very, very short here because of just the way we've got so many modules that are CPU intensive. If we go here on the fit, we have the Tech 2 tracking computer 3 heat sinks and to tracking enhance the tech 2 so we've got a lot of cpu intensive modules right here 0 0.2 left so that's why i had to put this dark blood right here because it increases dps as well that's really good but it has a lot less cpu usage than these tech 2 ones right here honestly the faction damage modules are just so overpowered in every way compared to the uh the uh, tech 2 ones and often they can really be worth it, even though if they cost maybe like 80 90 million they definitely are in many cases worth the extra price over the tech 2 is just both for fitting but also for increased performance as well unfortunately that's not the case with triglavian ships where you have to have the 1 billion isk plus to get a faction damage mod right there you can see we are rocking the canid skin the silver and black skin one of my favorite skins that exist in the game the canid skin it luckily exists on the oracle not a lot of ships it exists on one of the few ships that exists on is also one of my favorite looking ships in or favorite ships in terms of appearance the apocalypse right here you can see it's got a canid skin available as well very cool looking skin unfortunately this does not exist on other ships i would have really liked it to exist on other ships especially the paladin like why doesn't it exist on the paladin it needs to exist on the paladin come on i really love this skin i think it should exist on more ships not just some select few ships some ships have it such as the like the vengeance as their natural color scheme you can see here it doesn't have any skin but like it's their natural color scheme because it was a ship designed by the canid innovation Let's see here canid innovation pretty cheap ship actually i didn't know the vengeance was that cheap hmm. okay we're in ian orsta and this is there where there's a L4 mission hub right here. It's a very good system to test out L4 mission fits because I live in Jita. It's a very close system to Jita, only two jumps out. So you can just really go here and test some L4 missions. It's not optimal for doing L4 missions because of the security status, the 0 0.8. It's always best to do for the most amount of payout and LP to go in 0 0.5. But for convenience sakes, I just use it here because the L4 missions are always the same. 0 0.5 system, 0 0.8, 1.0, they're all gonna be exactly the same. It's just really, I wanna see performance right here because the main objective here is not to earn the most amount of ISK, it's to see how well this fit does. So we'll dock up here. One downside about doing it close to Gita, I can imagine, I've not really had uh, heard a lot of stuff happening in the system, but I think that it is more likely of getting gankers here because, you know, you're generally speaking closer to a more populated area of space. More risk of getting gankers who might try to pop you. So we'll decline some missions and see if we can get some decent ones right here. I'm baking. No, economic base. No, thank you. Locate agent. Maybe you don't need to do that. Request, please. Okay, recon one. This is a good mission to do, but... I'm not going to do it because it's not a good uh, portrayal of the Oracle's uh, capabilities because 
we could have actually done it to be honest because all you have to do is travel 100 kilometers and then you've done the mission so it's a very good mission in terms of completing quick and it would also be good because we've using a micro jump drive so we will jump instantly 100 kilometers so it'll be very useful for that but uh i made a mistake there i should have probably taken that mission ignoiton is a system that of low sector is quite close to here that we often get missions in smash the supplier like i don't want to do this mission because of standings look here i'll show you standings amar like we're coming close to minus five in minus five we will not be able to go in Amar space without getting attacked by the navy so i do not want to have to deal with that so uh, why are you giving me amarian missions i do not like the fact that we have to get these missions because it's, they're very bad for standings you can see that i did so many missions because i never ha understood the concept of getting the uh, the faction standing hits for a time so i was just like kept on doing them kept on doing them. Then i realized what you are not actually able it's not a good idea to do that actually whoa like i just found out like later down the line luckily we've got a lot of faction standings with oh look at that another amarian mission are they trying to piss me off right here uh, you could say my uh Galenta standings that these guys work for they're very good so i'm able to decline missions without problems okay this sm smuggle intervention is potentially a good mission it's not good to be honest for the oracle but we'll do it anyway i would have liked to find missions with uh, low em thermal based npcs angels is not the good idea but it's not that big of a difference we've not got that drastic deviances or changes in the resistances across the board and the most npcs just slightly it would obviously be more efficient if we were to go for like blood raiders or sancho but hopefully it'll go all right hopefully we won't get sniped we will snipe them these npcs organize our overview a little bit right here the thing is we're going to try to mitigate it all from the micro jump drive if it does not work to mitigate with kiting then we're going to be in big problems because we're going to be pretty slow with our afterburner very bad uh, armor repair rate with just a single armor repair we have got like a good armor repair rate because of this auxiliary nano pump but very bad resistances is what i'm trying to get out very bad overall armor defenses i could say instead better worded okay go to the room it was a long time since i did this smuggler intervention so i can't remember 100 percent how this mission plays out so it'll be maybe oh look at that there's a lot of npcs right here Okay, how far are these guys away? Because they look pretty far. Oh, this actually seems like a pretty decent mission for me. Put, uh, we don't even need to use our micro jump drive, to be honest. Okay, ultraviolet is what's going to be the long range right here. We can even sort by distance so we can get a better idea of what is close, what is far. I can't lock up those frigates, unfortunately. Hmm. Legionnaire. Let's go for this guy. See if we can just snipe these guys right here. You have to have some level of capacitor because the tachyon beam lasers do use quite a bit of capacitor. There was some good application we had right there because I mean we were very far away, just able to instantly pop them like that. But you'll see here, like, look at our capacitor, and then you look if we are just uh, offline these modules, we'll have a lot more capacitor re ready. Okay, we'll start locking up frigates soon. Shoot, please. You got a very slow cycle time. I'm used to the Paladin's boss cycle time. Unfortunately, we do not have that luxury here. But I'm pretty happy with how fast we're able to destroy these guys. It seems quite quick. Like, look at these glitches right here. You see the Angel Cartel NPC icon? It looks quite glitched. I don't know why it's like that. I hope NPC, uh, like CCP fixes that soon because it looks quite bad. Okay, multi-frequency maybe. Bopped. Yeah, there we go. Okay. We should be able to hit anything with multi-frequency because we've got pretty good fall off. Almost anything, I mean. Not everything, but almost anything. Okay, this guy seems to go down a bit slower, but I think it was because we got a grazing shot right there. It might be better to actually go with something like Ultraviolet, I believe, because they're still quite with it, uh, to a big degree within fall off. So I think it might be just overall better. Oh, we got glances off 2k. That's a really good hit, actually. Glances off 2k. Wow. Okay, damage mitigation seems to be pretty decent not too shabby oh one shot of that cruiser right there but i think we will want to use the ultraviolet because these guys are a little bit further away oh one shot it again now that was good right there that was good 
Let's see, I might want to use multi frequency. This guy is getting it in the 60s. Maybe not. Glasses off. We'll start locking up things that are trying to get within range. Hits. Okay, we've got hitting shots now. Oh, is that optimal? 44. Okay. 44 is still all right. Well, that's decent. We're not taking too much damage, luckily. I thought we were going to be taking a lot of damage from the long-range ships, but it didn't seem like they were able to hit that much. We have obviously been taking some damage, but it's not been too shabby. We're doing quite a bit of damage with the multi-frequency. 900 DPS. It's decent. It's decent right there. And long-range damage as well, not like short-range blaster-type stuff either. The Talos can have a very good DPS, but it's got absolutely really horrendous range on it. A lot better with the tachyon beam lasers right here. I mean, I'm sure you could put a high DPS Talos with rail guns as well. Maybe even hit further away than the Oracle can. But I think that it's decent what we're able to output here. It seems pretty decent. It doesn't seem to be too bad at all, actually. My main concern was the damage mitigation, that incoming damage, and it seems to be all right. I think certain um, NPCs, we could have other problems. I know that certain Serpentis ships do hit far out, they've got like rail guns. I know that certain Garistas NPCs also hit out far with their cruise missiles. That can be problematic since we are like a massive ship right here. They're going to apply fully to us. It's not going to be a good time we're going to have with them. Alright, hit shots. Can we get some penetrating and wrecking shots? That would be something satisfying to see. Hits. Oh, we're only getting hitting shots even though we are within optimal. It would be nice to get some wrecking shots. Maybe we would even like almost one shot these battleships with a wrecking shot. Because we've got some pretty fat volleys. Okay. So there we go. So we've got these other group right here. We want to be a bit tactical where we use our MJD. See now maybe something like... We can maybe do something like this and then move it up a little bit. Will this be good? Because I want to just... I don't want to go too close but I don't want to go too far either. This might be good. MJD. Let's go. Oh, I think we used it too early. We're going to go downwards now. No! No, don't. Oh, I think we used the MJD the wrong direction. It can be like that sometimes. Oh, no. Actually, it seems like it is alright. It is alright, it seems. Okay, maybe just do one volley right here. Boom. Do a grazing shot right here. We can do a shot on this frigate. Popped. There we go. Great. Lock up this NPC. Right. We don't have so many max lock targets, it seems. I would have hoped to have a bit more max lock targets, but we do not, we're not blessed with that luxury, unfortunately. I'm used to using Tech 2 ships and Tech 3 ships. I've been using that a lot recently, so I think that's why I'm being a bit spoiled with that. Yeah, I think I've been spoiled with that, actually. Okay, we'll try to go for stuff that's close and stuff that's fast because the stuff that's fast, like cruisers, is obviously going to get close to, to us quicker than these large uh, battleships over here. So that's why I'm going to go for this cruiser, even though it's a little bit further away than the battleships. Might want to go for this battleship over here. And the cycle speed is obscenely slow. I'm not used to that. I'm really used to the Paladin being able to just, like, really machine gun with its tachyon beam lasers compared to this. Like, it feels like an actual machine gun compared to these. These feel like slow motion tachyon beam laser shots. <laughs> hmm. But really, I'm very impressed with the damage mitigation. Like, we've not even had to use our armor repair a single time. So we've got a hit right there. 4k. Wow. These guys, they seem like they're not trying to get closer than... Okay, then some of them are. This guy's 50 kilometers old. Okay. Take it easy, boy. Okay. Three per five. Oh, that was so close. It would be nice to have some drones, but I think it's a common theme for the attack battle cruisers to not have the ability to field drones. Is a just a typical thing with them. They have very high DPS weaponry, so they sort of balance it out a bit by not being able to have drones. Kinda of would be cool though to have a drone based attack battle cruiser. But like more, I mean, there are battle cruisers, quite a few in fact, that can use heavy drones. It's not like they're going to be using oversized weapons the same way they're using oversized turrets like we've got going on right now. Look at our MJD. The cycle is very slow because we've not got a bonus to them. The Paladin has a very good bonus to this MJD cycle time. 
Okay, well, it's uh, the recharge is a lot quicker. It's like this whole thing is like I think five minutes or something like that. What is the? It's, like, it's three minutes. Okay. The MJD cycle time on Maraud is it ninety seconds? So basically half the time. Not that bad though. I mean, it's half the time with a Marauder, but I mean, you are using a two bill plus ship. You do get some perks by going with that. This guy, look, you can see how slow he is. Only 40, 40 meters a second. Is he maybe trying to keep range? No, that's why. Look, he's stuck in this structure right here. Because I was thinking, even for Angel Battleships that are NPCs, this is a bit slow. <laughs> okay, we'll move towards this acceleration gate. This is why MJDs are really nice. Very nice. I would have liked to put MWD on this ship right here, but... Capacitor problems. I will have big capacitor problems and fitting problems as well. Oh, look at that. We went just directly on this. That's so cool. <laughs> Pretty much perfectly landed on the acceleration gate. Uh-oh. I fear a little bit what's going to happen now. Because we just use MJD. What if in the next room, we just land at zero on very high DPS NPCs? We could have some problems. Hopefully not. It seems like we have been placed in a quite gracious spot. So we might be able to do this quite decently. And you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to ungroup these guys slightly. Put them a little bit into two groups. Because we got so far, or like so long um, cycle times, that I think it will be just worth it to go for the um, grouped weapons. We'll still one-shot them, just like you can see right here. 750 DPS. We were doing almost three, yeah, 3k volleys right here. So we could pro probably... Um, split them up even more and still being able to one-shot these guys. Um, we'll just stay put so we don't affect transversal. Yep, that looks pretty decent. We need to get 10 militants and I can imagine you have to take them from one of these cargo ships of some form. Maybe stop locking up. There we go. Okay, just wanted to stop locking them up so we could actually get the frigates locked down because they take a bit of time to take out. Popped, and this guy missed completely, unfortunately. He is going with some velocity, only 30 meters a second, and he was at 70 kilometers away, and he was still able to negate our uh, beam lasers. Pretty impressive maneuvering from that guy right there. Oh, oh one shot at that guy. One shot at that cargo ship right there. Because they, I think the Angel Personal Transport contains these militants who have been kidnapped, so we need to rescue them. Or it could be that they drop from a container by an NPC. I'm a bit unsure because I do remember or recall at least from some point of doing similar missions to like this. Where I was a bit confused where the drop was for the NPCs to be able to get like the mission objective completed. And we can see we're getting quite a bit of aggro going on right here. We might even want to pull range. We can start like just moving very slowly away from them like this. Because look, all of them are aggressing us. If they start hitting us, they're going to do a lot of damage. But I am very impressed again with the damage mitigation we've got right, going on right here. They're not able to hit anything. But I'm very certain that there are at least some missions which we will have troubles with a quite light tank fit as we've got right here. We're focusing pretty much purely on sniper capabilities with this oracle. Range, DPS, and capacitor to be able to shoot constantly. It's not really at all much focus on tank. Okay, we've got these guys. Okay, we can use multi-frequency. We are wasting a lot by going with uh, ultraviolet. Imperial Navy multi-frequency. Boom. Can we one-shot? Nah. Unfortunately. Unfortunately not. Mm -hmm. We'll just go for whatever's closest to be able to mitigate as much damage as possible. Yeah, they got missiles. You can see here, they got missiles. These missiles, like, they're able to hit. It's not like they've got turrets which have a fall off or anything. If they're in range, they're going to hit 100%. Usually fall offs are a bit more gracious of M guns so that you can sort of keep within there so you're not taking full damage. But as soon as you're able to hit me with the missiles, they're going to do 100% of the damage. Yeah, this guy's getting pretty close. Look at that. But he is also going down pretty fast as well. Just the, Our cycle time is very long. As well, because we are using the tachyon beam lasers, it's just the nature of the tachyon beam lasers to have very long cycle times. If we're using pulse lasers, for example, we might have a better time. I might even try that, but the thing is, we would need a lot more tank because we'd have to be a lot closer. And it might not be the best idea to try to brawl because we will not 
I, I, the attack on this ship is not the best. It doesn't have good resists, no bonuses to tank at all. I mean, I'm sure we could. But it would just be a bit problematic, I think. A little bit problematic. But maybe if we focus more on tank and less on DPS, like maybe instead of three uh, heat sinks, maybe two. Or instead of maybe two tracking enhancers, maybe one. Maybe zero even, because we will just be close brawling. Brawling with an oracle. It sounds quite unlikely or uncommon. Unorthodox is the word I was looking for. Because this is quite common. It uses a sniper platform. Or more commonly uses a bashing platform for structures where you just sit there and wreck structures because they're sitting there at zero. You're doing quite a bit of DPS for how much skill points is required to use the ship. And also for the price as well. We're doing battleship level DPS with this ship here. For a price that's pretty much the same as a tech one battleship or maybe even less because we are using a slight amount of bling modules with this heat sink over here this armor pair over here and the tachyon beam lasers are also quite uh, expensive as well they cost 50 million all these tachyon beam lasers that i'm carrying right now these eight tachyon beam lasers they cost a total of 50 million isk and they take two modules and we're not using bling modules keep that in mind we're not using bling modules we're using tech two modules and it costs 50 million and i think it has something to do with lore wise the, the tachyon beam lasers are one of the biggest weapon systems you can find. And it makes a lot of sense because they do have one of the best range of weapons you can find in any sub-capitals, I think. So, I mean, I'm not too surprised. They have also really crazy fitting requirements as well. Like, they're very big weapon systems. You can imagine they have a lot of... They need a lot of materials to produce. And they do perform pretty decently as sniper platforms as well, so... I'm, not going to be complaining too much but it would be interesting to see a tanked oracle like a very tanky oracle like a solid oracle with pulse lasers doing the like kind of short range kind of stuff i think that would be quite cool you remove the mjd because you maybe don't want to like snipe like this i think that would be pretty interesting ultraviolet go for this guy get some perfect hits right there let's see can we find any containers because if we find some containers it would perhaps be where these npcs are these militants I don't see any anywhere, but maybe the last NPC will drop them because that is often how it is with these kind of missions where the last NPC is the one to drop the mission objective item. You'll sort of see with his wreck that he will drop a container with it. Let's write it straight beside it. Okay, we can just keep moving. We can go into multi-frequency range. It, we're not particularly fast with the afterburner, but it's all right. I mean, 500 meters a second is slower, obviously, than a cruiser, but we are in an attack battle cruiser, which is even... I feel like it's an even more immobile version of a uh, battle cruiser. So, I mean, 500 meters a second, 550, is not too shabby, can, especially considering we're using a Tech 2 afterburner as well. I think we're Gila with a bling afterburner goes 700 meters a second, Tech 2 600 something. Not too bad. It's all right. Uh, could have always used MWD, but as I said before, fitting and power grid, uh, like capacitor. Those are my main issues right there. Fitting and capacitor. We completely nuke our capacitor with the MWD unless we go hard bling. And then also the fitting is very tight, as you can see with that power grid and CPU. It is a very close call right there. Oh, I thought I destroyed that GIST commander. There we go. You need to keep an eye on the Rex right here to see if he drops the loot. Or if he does, if he doesn't, maybe it will be coming from one of these Angel Cartel personal transport Rex. We'll go on the Rex tab here. These here, personal transport. It might be in one of these guys, but I do think it actually does drop some kind of container from the last NPC. That is where it's going to drop from. I do think actually that's the case. We'll just see after we've destroyed these NPCs right here. It's very interesting how the Macarials have missiles. The normal Macarials, they don't have any bonuses to missiles, and I don't even think they have any launcher slots. Let's see here. Macarial. Yeah, no launcher slots. It's, I guess just because they're a bit like typical Minmata, you know? They're sort of Minmata based, these Macarials. So Minmata tend to have a mix of hybrid turrets, not hybrid, uh, the projectile turrets and the missiles. That's why they're using missiles as well, because we saw that they were coming some missiles before. Let's see if he even is will shoot missiles. Maybe the missiles came from the cruisers. Who knows? You can see definitely there's auto cannons going on. High rate of fire. Saw a lot of damage incoming at one point. 
Yeah, I think these are auto cannons because he really is having a hard time hitting me, even at 20 kilometer range. Definitely auto cannons going on right there. Look, he's got 100 damage shot right there. Okay, let's see. Now, will he drop? Because usually the last NPC drops something. Um, no, he did not. Okay. So, we might have to go here to these Angel Cartel personal transport ships. Okay, we'll go here and grab this, see if there's anything inside of there. Ruined Stargate. Ooh. It would be quite cool if you could go through this Stargate right here. And you could just go here and go to some mysterious system. <laughs> it looks broken. But quite interesting to see other Stargates than the, the like the ones you usually see because it's so like fixed the universe of new eden is very fixed like you have these stargates and that's the thing that's what something that was very cool about the triglavian invasion is that they mixed up the stargates so that they didn't work anymore and like made new routes that was a quite revolutionary thing because in the whole history of new eden stargates had never really been altered to that degree at least as far as i know as far as i've been playing stargates have never been changed they perhaps have changed previously but as far as i've been playing for the last five years they've never changed so seeing those changes was a pretty revolutionary change <laughs> look at the if you notice a bit on the oracle you see that there is some degree of asymmetry you think oh it looks a bit weird here and the reason is because you can see here on the left part there's actually a bridge here's a bridge here that's the reason it looks a bit asymmetrical because it's not here i was thinking why well, it looks a bit weird but well, what i can't exactly pinpoint what is like uh, different on one side and the other me personally i'm a big advocate of the symmetrical ships i think symmetrical ships pretty much always look better but it doesn't look t that bad it's this uh, like uh, it reminds me a bit of the omen the omen has a bridge that's right on its side there we go 10 militants and we have completed the mission we will jump back to oh that's actually a pretty decent tinker as well 6.5 million. I mean, it sounds really bad for you guys who are doing null sec ratting, but I would say it's quite good considering it's high sec and we're against these angel guys who hardly give any uh, like uh, loot either. Not loot, I mean bounties. Because generally speaking, even if you go with like a very high DPS ship like a paladin, for example, I could do 3k DPS. If I do L4 missions, usually... The NPCs are going to, like, just by default have low bounties. And then also that there's not going to be a lot of high bounty NPCs as well, like battleships. So even if I am in a 3k DPS paladin, I might get, like, 25 million isk ticks. While a basic low-skill tech 2 rated battle, uh, rattlesnake might get the same as well. Because in null sec, in null sec that is. Because the you've got the good anomalies with a lot of battleships to give a high amount of bounties there. So, considering this is high sick, 6.5 million tick was quite impressive, I think. Um, especially considering the NPCs as well. So, complete this mission right here. There we go. Oracle doing L4 missions. I was quite impressed with how good the damage mitigation was at long range. I do think, however, depending on mission to mission, it can be a bit of an issue. Now, I think in this case, these angels were mainly using the auto cannon, so it wasn't that bad, but... I think in some missions it could be a problem, but I thought it was pretty interesting to just see some variation of L4 mission fits because attack and battle cruisers can have the DPS of battleships, but they are cheaper, a lot cheaper, and or generally speaking require less skills as well. So I think it's interesting to see how they perform in L4 missions. I might try another one in the future. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.